All right, everyone. Today we're going to do a thing called rationalize the denominator. And I'm going to take on a little bit of a history lesson because there's a reason for it. If I had 3 over square root 5, if I'm back in the 1400s and I don't have a, have a calculator, this means I would have to go 3 divided by 2 point blah, 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 a great big giant long decimal. I would div have to divide that. And that would be really hard to do. So people didn't like to divide with decimals. What they would prefer to do is multiply. And so they would take this scenario and they would rewrite it by multiplying it times 1. But they choose a funny looking 1. Because oftentimes when we multiply by 1, it doesn't change the value. It just often makes it look different. The reason why I picked this one is because this is the square root on the bottom. And so when I multiply that, I get 3 root 5 on the top. And on the bottom, root 5 times root 5 is the square root of 25, which is then 3 root 5 over 5. And so now, if historically speaking, they would have to multiply 3 fifths, which is 0.6, times this decimal. And that's a much easier calculation than dividing by that decimal. And so that's okay. where this came from. And so the grammar of mathematics says you're not allowed to have a square root on the bottom. You always have to rationalize it by multiplying it by root 5. It's just kind of uh, a rule have left over from many, many years ago. And so grammar mathematicians make it fancy. They want to get rid of square roots from the bottom. Let's try another example here. Another example, let's say I have negative 2 over 4 square root 3. Okay, so to do this, a couple things I can do. Before I rationalize it, let's simplify this fraction. I know negative 2 or 4 is the same as negative 1 over 2 root 3. That's just simplifying this part. Now, to do my rationalizing part, what am I going to multiply by, Mr. Cole? Um, well, 1 again. So but we do root 3 over root 3. But my denominator is 2 root 3. Why do I ignore the 2? Uh, well, all we're trying to do is rationalize it. So we're trying to make it a whole number. So if we times by, if we do root 3 times root 3, we'll get 3. And then right. 3 times 2 will be rational. Super. Okay, so negative 1 times root 3 is just negative root 3. And the bottom is the 2 times the root 9, which is negative root 3, times 2 times 3 is 6. And that's my final answer for that. Okay, so our, our denominator is now just a nice whole number. Right. We don't want square roots on the bottom. All right, another example. Next example says negative 2 over 2 square root plus X. Tricky. Tricky. Okay, this so we one. need to think about that, that bottom, that denominator, it's, it's really kind of in brackets, isn't it? It's like negative 2 divided by all of that on the bottom. Right. Those brackets are implied. And when we've got pluses, rather than just all multiplications, it's a little bit trickier. Mm -hmm. So we are still going to multiply by 1, but the 1 we're going to choose is almost the same as this, but it's going to be root 2 and an x, root 2 and an x. But it's always going to take this sign, whatever this sign is here, and it's going to make the opposite. So in our case, we're going to make it negative, negative. If this was a negative sign, then these would be positive. And this is called the conjugate. It's a good math word for you. So we multiply by the conjugate, opposite sign. OK. OK, so doing that. We know that I can say this is negative 2 times root 2 minus x. And this one, I have to foil it. I go root 2 times root 2 is the square root of 4, which is 2. Root 2 times negative x is negative x root 2. And I go positive x times root 2 is positive x root 2. And then finally I get an x times a negative x is a negative x squared. But it looks like I have square roots on the bottom. 
But if I look even carefully, I'll notice a negative and a positive. So they subtract away. And if I tidy this up, the bottom is 2 minus x squared. No surge down here. Nice. The top, I distribute the negative 2. I get negative 2 root 2 plus 2x. And that's okay. a rationalized denominator. That bottom part is quite challenging. So okay. Be careful with that. But that'll always happen, won't it? If you multiply by the conjugate, yep. then you're going to end up with a rational denominator. So that's why we chose that. Right. That's our one. Because this we know will cancel away. All right, one more example. Last one here. Let's say I have 2 root 3 plus 9 root 5. That's going to be all over not 8 root 2. Okay, so again, I'm going to multiply by 1, but my 1 is going to look like square root of 2 over square root of 2, because that's what I have, that's my root on the bottom. Multiplying, I have to distribute here, distribute here. So, what do I have then, Mr. Cole? So you've got 2 root 6, because I've done root 3 times root 2, and then you've got 9 root 10. And on the bottom, the bottom we've got well, root 2 times root 2 is 2, so we've got 8 times 2, which is 16. 16. All right, and then we just have to look at our, um, our thirds and, and think if there's any square numbers that go into 6 or 10. Mm, I can't think of it. Any? So 1, 4, 9, no. So that's okay. That's as simple as we can get. Right. And if it was a 10 and 10, then we could add them, but that's not going to happen. So we're done. Good. Sweet.